This new Maroon 5 album smells like somebody stacked cans of Febreze on top of a pile of shit. Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. <sighs> Maroon 5, they're back in action again. Album 7 is out in the world, it's called Jordy, and it's time for another episode of Pop Gone Wrong. We've got a lot of ground to cover today. They did not make this easy on me, and as much as it might seem like low-hanging fruit just for a second before we really get into the heart of it, I have to be a human for a second and empathize and say that their manager that they named this album Jordy after, he passed away a few years back. My condolences to them as a friend, as a longtime business partner, to all of his family, including actor Jonah Hill, he was the older brother of. My heart goes out for that loss. It's a terrible, tragic thing. But this cynical side of me can almost see this as them using it as like a kinda go easy on us for this album. It's named after our manager who passed away. Maybe, just maybe, I would dial it back if I actually felt like this was an album that had anything genuine to say at all. If it was something that tried to be a bit more poetic or at least pronounced with the way that they do things. But instead, it feels like Maroon 5 have felt like for the past decade they're an AI bot that are programmed to collaborate with the biggest artists that are having hit singles all over the place because Maroon 5 can't do it on their own star power anymore. Genuine question here, who in their right mind is seeking out a full album of material from Maroon 5. I think they're aware of this because this is absolutely just a collection of singles and songs that they kind of banked up over the past few years, threw it together and shit it out in album form. It feels like a total disconnect. It can go from sounding like Adam Levine standing in front of a ring light practicing to be a TikToker in his mid-40s to just bouncing back to styles of the 80s and having no heart no soul, just a total disconnect from anything from the former band that we once knew. Maroon 5 are such an oddball case to me because I think they're a talented group of musicians when they actually put their back into something, but clearly they've done no heavy lifting for the past decade. As the years roll by, it's collapsed into more of the Adam Levine experience, which I don't think a ton of us really signed up for. I'm not sure why Adam is so afraid of going solo, because most of the tracks, especially on this album, George sound like Adam in a studio somewhere, just working with the big name producers like Boy Wanda, Monsters and Strangers, and they're just pumping out these tracks that feel like they're trying to tether themselves to whatever trend is happening in music at the time, except it also sounds outdated, like they're trying to copy trends that were maybe a few years ago, because they're that far removed from reality. To take it a step further, Adam Levine has gone out of his way to say that rock is dead, it's no longer cool, this was just just like a year or two ago, and he kind of stood by his comments too, but bro, rock is back! Like, guitars in music, it's out there again. So why the fuck are you not taking Maroon 5 back to this place instead of just trying to cash in on these trappy, minimalistic, bullshit excuses of songs? We got a taste of the next chapter of Maroon 5 that we were all so anxiously awaiting with the lead single Memories in late 2019. It was a tribute to their friend Jordy that passed away, so I understand the sentiment. I don't think it's one of their worst songs ever, but it does have some glaring problems. The fact that they have pulled off the whole live thing, like a crowd cheering in the background, they did it on their debut album Songs About Jane, and it worked out pretty nicely, but they tried it again here, and it just sounds awkward, because it's almost like a bad film where you can tell that they bought a song and they just looped the instrumental in the background, but then it runs out so there's some awkward silence in the background, that's the crowd roaring on memories. And also, who told them it was a good idea to sample a classical song? It was their first hit in quite some time that only had the Maroon 5 name behind it, so I thought maybe they would dial back the features for Jordy. Well, instead, they ran in the opposite direction and said, shove them on every single track except for like four, and we've got everybody from her to Megan The Stallion, and then posthumous appearances from Juice World and Nipsey Hussle. Where do we draw the line with this posthumous feature bullshit? To me, it's always been grave robbing. I've never been happy about it. And just to see these voice memos, these little demos getting milked and sold out for features, I mean, Maroon 5 probably had to pay a pretty penny, especially for Juice World. And it's just a very short verse so that they could write featuring Juice World. It's gonna get more streams from fans of his that are gonna go check 
out the song, they're gonna save it, they're gonna listen to it because they love Juice, and I don't blame them necessarily, I blame the people behind it, the estates that are continuing to cash bags on these dead people that are no longer with us. I mean, Maroon 5 of all people, do you really think the Nipsey Hustle and Juice World were just gonna be down with that no matter what? I mean, maybe, I can't speak for them, but I can't imagine that they'd be rushing to collaborate with Adam Levine. Upon my first inspection of this record, checking out a few of the songs just to see exactly what it would be, I was at a loss for how absolutely terrible some of the tracks actually are. I mean, the Black Bear collaboration is genuinely cringe. You've got a song called Lost where it sounds like Adam Levine is using echolocation in an attempt to find a personality. Still can't find one. Guys, I'm not even kidding, but the name of the song, of course, is Echo. And then they put an echo effect so that it repeats the word echo as if it's echoing. And I just, I, you can see it in the back of your mind's eye where they're like in the studio like, what if we put an echo on Echo. Oh my god, dude, it's brilliant! The legend herself from Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks, appears on the song Remedy, which is among the better songs on the album. I guess it's inoffensive enough. It's kind of got a danceable pop vibe that throws it back to maybe the 70s, the 80s, but at the same time, it's very flaccid. My main response is why, Stevie? Why? Was the bag that big? Was it really worth kind of undermining your own legacy at least just a little bit? These songs are all just from the standard edition of Jordy. That's right, there is a deluxe edition that should be called the Nightmare Edition. We did not need it, but God knows they needed to boost those streaming numbers so they tacked on some other collaborations, some extra songs, a remix, because of course they did. And there's one song, it's literally not even Maroon 5. It was pretty clear that it was just Adam Levine and Jason Derulo, but it's on the album for some reason. Trust me, you are not gonna wanna come back to Jordy. Whoa, 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 what do you mean back to Jordy? We never landed on Jordy. We, did, we, did, we just passed by it. As bad as this album truly is to its core, it's not the worst album that I've heard thus far in 2021 because I didn't have expectations for it. I wasn't racing in saying, yeah, Jordy is just going to be the big comeback album where they shut up all the haters and they get back to the it won't be soon before long or the songs about Jane or even the hands all over air is soon. No, I didn't approach it like that. So of course, I'm not let down. I'm just still almost baffled, puzzled, if you will, at the fact that they somehow keep getting worse. It's like they're fraying right in front of our eyes. They're falling apart at their core, and they don't know what to do. Instead of trying to maybe mix it up or even return to a sound that they know so many of their fans love, they just continue to throw out this bullshit. And even the songs that are a little bit better, like Lovesick, it sounds way too derivative, way too reminiscent of other styles of music. In fact, that one reminded me of a song that I can't quite identify, I can't quite put a finger on. And then also, Beautiful Mistakes, I didn't hate. It's got Megan Thee Stallion on it, I think her verse is solid. It reminds me of the early 2010s, and for the love of God, at least Adam Levine is actually singing. I hear a melody in this song, and the trappy percussion, along with the kind of muted, watery guitars, it works well enough. I don't think it's a great song, but I think it's just fine. When Beautiful Mistakes is the highest bar, like the golden seal of approval for me on the album, the best song. I think you're in trouble, and the landmines that we're gonna get to next are really gonna show that. As if they had actually given a fuck up to the midpoint of the record, which I truly don't think they did, we get to a song called Seasons, which I find to be one of the most horrid that Maroon 5 have ever put to their name. It features Adam Levine just trying to be a 21-year-old TikTok star. It's got all of the mannerisms that you would expect, the kind of quirky flow where he goes fast, kind of sings, kind of raps. It's got the trappy percussion that sounds like every other song in that genre ever. It's truly the definition of secondhand embarrassment, but still, it's not as bad as Echo with Black Bear. I mean, the sounds that he makes on that song it sounds like the alert Thomas the Tank Engine would make as he's pulling into the train yard to warn all of the other trains that something's gone horribly wrong. One Light featuring Bantu feels like a sidestep to them actually saying anything about injustices of the world, instead just kind of alluding to the fact that something might be crazy out there, something might be wrong, and they're like, hey, we tossed like a dollar at charity, that's basically the equivalent of it for me. The song with her, I think, is okay, convince me otherwise, although it feels 
feels like it's actually her song instead of theirs. And the same thing kind of happens with the track with Juice World. Although I don't like the fact that it really exists, it just kind of makes me feel dirty. I do think it's one of the better on the album. I can actually hear some of the instrumentation. Taking the crown of shit for what might be the worst song on the album though, that award goes to Lost, which is just Adam Levine saying, Lost, yeah, I'm lost, now I'm found, now I'm found, now I'm found. Really, Maroon 5? You gonna do my boy Lance Stewart dirty like that? Not even gonna give him a co-write? I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm found. Oh, Hannah pointed that out to me, and I couldn't unhear it. It's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Look, I think we can all agree that Maroon 5 are so far past their prime, they can't even see it in the rear view. It's not on the radar at all. They're a band that is a band in word only. It has no meaning to it. It feels like a total disconnect, like somebody just throwing things out into the endless void of space and some people are somehow still listening. I guess the divorced middle-aged dads and the soccer moms chugging wine only to remember, hey, you know what? There's somebody out there just doing worse than me, and that apparently is Maroon 5. This album, Jordy, is pretty terrible. It's also occasionally okay, but occasionally okay is nowhere close to the great songs that I know they're capable of making. I even did a top 10 on them. Check that out if you want to see me talking positively about Maroon 5. But at this point, they should absolutely just retire, or maybe Adam can go solo. Maybe they can turn into a touring band. I think a lot of people would welcome that decision. And I'm giving this album a 1 out of 5. Thanks for making it all the way through this episode of Pop Gone Wrong on the Adam Levine experience. Let me know your thoughts on Jordy. If you happen to actually listen to it in full in the comments section down below, please drop a like on the video, subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my videos. If you want to see that top 10 Maroon 5, tap here, another recent review here, socials in the description, and I'll be back soon with more on ARTV.